storytelling is what connects us as humans. It's also the earliest form of communication. And to me, words have so much power. They have the power and the ability to change our hearts, to change our world, to change our companies, our mindset. So storytelling in that connection that you make with people is what develops relationships. This is the Storytelling for Sales podcast, a show about leveraging the power of storytelling to ignite your sales performance and grow your business. Well, hello and welcome back. I'm your host, Executive Sales Coach Ed Bilat, and it's great to be back with you again. Today, we have a very interesting and intriguing guest for you to talk about sales, sales strategy, and sales training specifically. Maddie Pimentel is joining us from Charlotte, North Carolina. She is currently a National Sales Training Manager for Snap AV, and she has an extensive experience and results in sales strategy, sales management, and training. And what is specifically interesting about her that she has not just been a trainer or professional facilitator all her life. She has actually been on the sales floor herself as an account executive and area sales manager. And she knows exactly what it feels like when sales are not happening and uh, you're going from hero to zero, beginning of every month. Mary is fluent in Spanish. She was born in Havana, Cuba, and moved to Atlanta with her family when she was two months old. Mary Pimentel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm so excited to have you with us today, and I cannot wait to learn about your sales approach, leadership and training style, and of course, storytelling techniques. But before we do this, I will ask you our traditional question, which is, what business success story inspires you and why? Oh, wow. When I saw your questions and we talked about this, I immediately knew who inspires me and their success story in business is something that guides me every day. And so Uh this story is about my father. My father, his name is Roberto Saba. My mom and dad left communist Cuba at the ages of 22 and 27 to make a better life for themselves and our family here in the United States in 1968. Wow. Very yes. young. Huh? <laughs> yes. Right. And so they left everything they knew because they knew they wanted freedom. They knew they wanted the ability to make their own way. And so even though my father had an accounting degree from the University of Havana, he worked any jobs he could get until 1970 when he actually opened his own business. So it only took him two years to gather the resources and get everything together to open his own business. Wow. What kind of business? Yes, yes. Well, he was the general manager for a union oil service station, which included gasoline and auto repairs. And of course, my mom helped him in the business. And throughout the years, my dad and my mom's business won numerous awards. And in 1991, the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce awarded my father's business business of the year for all of Atlanta. Yeah. Wow. So, yes, a lot to be proud of. Before that, in 1982, my father decided that he wanted to go out on his own. And in conversations with Union Oil, he was able to purchase the land and the building from the company. So he removed the gasoline pumps, he demolished the building, and he built a brand new state-of-the-art service center for European cars. It was huge. It had 14 (laughs) bays, and it was really large. It really rivaled more of a small to medium dealership as far as a service department. So that was very impressive for me to see as a child. And even so, while my dad was building this business, He not only single-handedly supported our family, which had now grown to include my brother and my sister, but he also supported my uncle, which is my mom's brother, and my aunt and their three girls in Mexico when my uncle was 37 years old and he decided to go to medical school. Wow. Wow. (laughs) That's a remarkable story. It is. Like as an immigrant myself, I can totally relate to this. And you come with nothing, absolutely nothing, and you're able to build an exciting business. Yes. From nothing and being able to pivot. Uh, right. So like that takes a lot of business skills. Absolutely. And it's, and it's a great story. That's a great story. It absolutely paper. is. And actually, there's a little more to this story because my uncle had lost all of his credentials from his pre-med credits in communist Cuba. So he had to complete a whole new bachelor's of science here in the U.S. and then attend medical school. 
So I see these sacrifices and the hustle that my family has always shown, and it inspires me every single day to be my very best. Wow. Wow. That's a great story. So thank you so much for sharing this. So let's turn the spotlight right back at you, right? So you've been in the, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So it's your turn. Right? So, <laughs> so you've been in the sales world and specifically in the sales training world for many years, right? And had a very dynamic career helping and inspiring sales teams at many organizations, AT&T, Local Age, NCR, Cartera, and now your current adventure at uh, Snap AV. What is interesting about you, maybe, that you have not just been a trainer or professional facilitator all your life, right? Right. So you have actually been on the sales floor yourself as an account executive, as an area sales manager, and you know exactly what it feels like when the sales are not just happening, or then you go in from hero to zero beginning of every month. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Right. So how did you even get into the sales world? Well, I started early. It's kind of funny because when I was in about fifth grade, each year my dad had a big celebration for their anniversary and they had balloons, snow cones, but I knew I wanted to work the hot dog stand. <laughs> so, <laughs> And so even though everything was free to the customers, it really taught me about asking questions just to make sure I got their order right. Plus, I would suggest drinks or chips if they didn't ask for it. So I knew from that time it was about making the customer happy happy. <laughs> okay. So just making the customer happy. That's right. So obviously you have chosen to go to this profession and um, you made a lot of mistakes, right? <laughs> As you were oh, going through, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. But in terms of your learning path, what would you say would be the top three critical skills you think salespeople should have and actually must have in order to thrive today because it changed so much? Oh, absolutely. It's ever changing. But I think one thing remains the same, and that is it's all about the relationship. It's always all about the relationship. That's the number one thing. And I would say that the second thing is because it's about and only about the relationship, listening is a lot more important than speaking. And your customer is only going to truly listen to you when you're speaking to their needs. So mm -hmm. I would say that the needs assessment or the discovery step of the sales process is absolutely the most important thing. And that's from personal experience as being a sales rep on the floor, as a manager, as a training manager, leading training and development, all of that. It's always about understanding the customer and being able to have that most important step be the one you spend the most time on mm -hmm. is really understanding the customer. and. Of course, as a trainer, I think the third thing that's critical is learn everything that you can about your products, your processes, everything that relates to the company you represent. So when the time comes, you have really successfully helped this customer, and then you can build that relationship. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Specifically on the second point on listening. I know as salespeople, we love to talk, right? So yes, we, love, we do. We love talking to people. This is what brings us the joy of sharing your knowledge. You know, we love to help, right? But how, right. how often do we actually, then the customer speaks, how often do we actually try to figure out what we're going to say next versus listening? Right. Oh, so human, though. That's what we do. We always want to be part of that conversation. And we're like, oh, I got something great to add. But we just have to have that patience to sit back and always know it's about the customer. It's not about us. Yeah. Like, I think I've read this sales story then at the beginning of the discovery appointment. So a sales rep just casually asks a question. So and, and how's your dog? And the customer <laughs> says, well, well, the dog actually died. Yeah. Oh, oh that's gosh. great. Let me take you through the first point of my power presentation. <laughs> so, like, oh, so, Lord, that's yeah. a recipe for disaster. That's terrible rapport building. What do you mean it's great? <laughs> so the dog, oh, the dog died, gosh. right? So like, yeah. and very often we just listen with intent to respond and not with an intent to actually that's right. uh, to understand, right? That's right. But I mean, isn't it like really difficult to train salespeople? Oh, my goodness. Well. It can be, but it's my passion. So I don't find it to be difficult, but it is It is very much a time-staking process to prepare to train the sales reps. Okay, so tell me more. This is interesting. Like, What steps do you need to actually take to understand sales rep and to train them? 
Absolutely. Well, I have to understand needs of the business. I have to understand the timelines. And then once I understand the solution or the product that we need to launch on a certain date, I will put together the PowerPoint, the presentation, the material surrounding the training of that, including product managers and anyone else that needs to be a part of it. And so once we roll it out, I think it's important not only to train it, but to have that closed loop system to make sure we're delivering the right content at the right time. So I train it or our team will train something and immediately I send out a survey. And I need to know and understand how valuable the training was. And I only use three questions. I say on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend this session to a colleague? Okay. So, of course, I use the net, net, net promoter, promoter score. Net promoter score, very high. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a huge fan of that. And I've taught that also because we've used it in our business just to get feedback and punch list from our customers to understand what are the issues if we can't get a nine or a 10. So I do the same for my team. I asked them, how likely do you recommend it? My second question is, what did you find most useful? And my third question is, what would you like to see the next time this is presented or this topic is presented? Mm -hmm. So what I do is I train, I send out that survey, I evaluate the results, make adjustments that make sense, and then I repeat it. Mm -hmm. So that's my cycle. Very interesting. And in terms of like learning overall, do you see any trends? Like, obviously, there's a generational gap, right? So, obviously, there is all kind of different styles of selling. Like, so, like, what are the current trends in terms of teaching and training salespeople? That's such a great question because it's so timely. And right now at SNAP, we're evaluating several programs that were going to help us really get our training modules and all of the things that we want them to have at their fingertips. We're looking at mobile, we're looking at gamification for that just-in-time training. Let's say I have a, a rep that's going to go see a customer and we have thousands and thousands of products, our own that we distribute or that we manufacture, as well as many, many partners around the world with mm -hmm. amazing products. And so they can't memorize everything about those, but what if my team could just open up the app on their mobile device and take a look at a video really quickly and then walk in and be able to really help a customer around a particular topic? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're seeing. So just to summarize, so mobilize, right? So like everybody yes. wants to have this information available right away. Yes. And then you mentioned gamification. So could you tell me about that? Yes. And I think it's pretty common knowledge that most people love to play games of some sort on their phone, whether it's a Sudoku or a crossword puzzle, or a lot of people play Candy Crush. I've never played that, but I hear it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a word game that I play on my phone and I'm at like at level 700 oh, because I love, yeah. <laughs> thank you. I love word searches and I love to learn. So if there are words that come up, I don't recognize, I always look them up. But because we are a society that are pretty much mobile dependent and some would say addicted <laughs> mm -hmm. to our phones, when we're waiting in line or when we're doing something, a lot of people will just take out their phone and or their iPad and play a game, what if we could take that same type of activity and turn it into a learning activity? Let the reps and the team earn rewards every time they pass different certifications or learn and listen to a new course. Mm -hmm. So when they earn badges and they earn points, it lets them compete with each other. It lets them see their accomplishments. And it just makes for a lot more of a fun experience in learning versus, oh, I've got to sit through another in-person training that's taken up my time. Mm -hmm. This lets them do it on their time. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So the attention span of the average person in North America is down to eight seconds. Right? <laughs> it's worse than a goldfish, that's, I know. <laughs> that's, that's right. So like if you talk about salespeople, it's probably four seconds. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> so like, and Absolutely. There, and there's nothing worse you know, than you get 40 people in a room and just keep them there for eight hours for three days. Right. Mm -hmm. like, this is a way to build a war. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So gamification, uh, of course, like I can totally resonate with that. And then salespeople, we naturally competitive. Right. So, yes, so people, exactly. You know, so, so they like to play and, and have that camaraderie and competition at the same time. That's right. So like, have you guys tried any kind of like blended approach? Then there's a workshop and then a game and then um, there's an e-learning module. Like, is that working out? Have you experimented in that space? Well, what we've done is we 
of course, have our onboarding program, which is the first four weeks of any sales rep's life at Snap AV. And then we have a series that is every Monday at one o'clock for 90 minutes, and we bring on new products, and that's our continuing education series. And for those that can't attend, we record the session. We also upload that to our Teams site, which is our learning library portal right now. We update the recording and the slides together so that anybody that missed it can catch up on it. So we have uh, different avenues of learning so that it's not the same for everyone. We know for a fact everyone can't jump on. So we use different platforms and techniques for that blended approach so that everyone gets the information but gets it in the way that they can absorb it. That's right. That's right. Because everybody consumes information and processes information differently. That's right. So, so no, this is great. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the industry specifically, because you have operated and are operating in several very diverse industries. So audio and visual, telecommunication, financial, IT. How did you pick your adventures? That <laughs> That's pretty funny because each time I didn't pick the industries, they picked me. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't Tell me about that, I wasn't yeah. thinking of of changing industries but exciting things were presented to me at the right time so either a recruiter or a personal reference reached out to me and just the timing was right so each time I was able to use the experience in like the telecom industry or the advertising and publishing industry from Bell South and AT&T, moving into the loyalty space with Cartera and be able to use the same approach with the new industry and incorporating new elements. And same thing when I went to NCR, which was technology mm-hmm. and now for Snap just as well. So this is the fourth time I've changed industries and I love it. I thrive. I love to learn. So I thrive on learning new things and simplifying them for our teams. Yeah, no, this is excellent and exciting, right? Which brings me to the next question. Like, so what type of stories, like across the exciting industries you worked with, like what type of stories excite your customers and your partners? Like, what do you see? That is such a great question. I started back with Snap AV in February of this year. And since starting, I've been out in the field with each of our outside sales team members in their different regions visiting customers. Oh, that's and we have. Exciting. It was just so much fun to be able to sit at the table and see what's important to these dealers and talk to them and see how when our reps would explain and tell them stories around how other installers have been successful with our products and our solutions and also how other installers have resolved actual installation issues just to see how much they gained from that and how it really was able to help them as they thought about what solutions and products they needed. And just one example was I was able to visit the Triad Speaker factory in Portland, Oregon a few months ago. And this is where they custom make speakers. And it was an incredible experience to see that and understand like even one small part of the customization is where it's if it's a behind wall speaker, mm-hmm. they can actually cut the speaker case, the casing on it, to go around a pipe that may be around a wall, inside a and wall. And you can still hit the sound? And the sound is perfect because they know how to make that cabinet for the speaker in a way that will keep the integrity of the sound intact, but at the same time be able to customize even down to cutting around a tube or a pipe that's in the Mm. back of uh, inside that wall. And so when I tell that story, they're like, oh, that's really cool. And then I'm able to share with them how I went to the factory and the incredible benefits of having these custom made speakers. So just being able to tell that story Mm. is really exciting. That's wonderful. Like one of the concepts that we always talk to our listeners is that idea of creating a story library. Right. So for any given business that at any given moment in any sales situation, you can just go to that library and pick up a book. Right. So yes. but not just yes. any book, but the book which already been written, designed and actually rehearsed for this particular situation. So that, that's so right. Back to your speaker story. So how can we label that story? Probably we could take something like customization. Right. That's right. Or uh, maybe we can say this is the ability to understand your customer needs. So the next time any of the sales rep hear that word customization and they're saying, "Uh aha, so then I go exactly to that library, I go exactly to that shelf and I pick up maybe story about the triad speaker, 
right? That's uh, right. So and then this way they That's don't. Such a great point. <laughs> this way they don't have to come up with something on the fly, right? Which is very reasonable. That's right. right? That's right. I'm all about organizing and yeah. making it available to the team so they have it when they need it. Correct. So like we tell them, okay, use Mary's story, right? <laughs> so it's, it's already there. <laughs> or their own. Yeah, or their That's own, right. right? So that library is open to the entire company. So no, no, that's, that's right. such a great example. So thank you. And in terms of like sales leadership, what challenges do you see facing many of today's sales leaders? Like what are they wrestling with these days? Well, I see that, and this is very recent for us as we're in the process, but I, I feel like how does sales leadership keep up with technology to enable their sales teams? And that's a question we ask ourselves and we're constantly looking for the best products. There are certain areas that apply to every sales team, which is like territory assignment. How do we divide up the territory? And how do reps map out that territory mm -hmm. in their routing? So those are really key features that are important in any solution that our team is looking at. That way they can not only see their customers along the route, they can pop in if somebody hasn't made an appointment just to say hello, if it's on the way, even down to finding where the hotel stop and start point is and routing it around that. So those are a few, as well as a learning platform. We're actually looking for a really great learning platform that integrates with our other programs that we already use, such as Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a challenge. How do we keep up? It's ever changing. And how are we delivering and offering these solutions to our team and keeping it current, as well as making sure we're staying within our budget and making good choices? Mm -hmm. So. No, absolutely. So this is very important. And sometimes it's just too much choice, right? So like there's, right. there's so many ways. A lot out there. Right. And then in front of the customer, you basically have five seconds to tell your story. You can't just point blank and says, okay, let me go dig this up for you. Just wait. Right. So like the art, exactly. of, the art of the human conversation is still there as much as we love technology. Like it's, it's got to be somebody delivering this, right? Absolutely. So, which brings me to our last question, which is like, what does the art of storytelling mean to you professionally and personally? Oh, goodness. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this. I have a journalism degree. My undergrad is in journalism. Oh, wow. So, I did, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Communication is a passion for me, as storytelling is what connects us as humans. It's also the earliest form of communication. And to me, words have so much power. They have the power and the ability to change our hearts, to change our world, to change our companies, our mindset. So storytelling in that connection that you make with people is what develops relationships. So storytelling is really huge. Well, this is an awesome answer. So thank you so much. Such a wonderful way to conclude our podcast. But before <laughs> we go... What would be the best way for our listeners to connect with you and learn more about what you're doing? Sure. If anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm more than happy to connect with them. My email address is Maddie, that's M-A-D-D-I-E dot, my last name, Pimentel, P-I-M-E-N-T-E-L at yahoo.com. Okay, great. So I will make sure we will include it in our notes section with all the information, and I assume yes. you're on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> yes, yes, and please reach out to me there as well. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for coming to our show. It was such a pleasure talking to you, to hear from a real professional, not just a professional facilitator, but somebody who went through the entire route and helping and motivating sales <laughs> teams around the world. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you so much, Ed. I appreciate it. That does it for this episode of Storytelling for Sales. You'll find show notes and links on our webpage, storytellingsales.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.